Prepare to experience the strongest radio allowable by law. Secrets will be revealed. Myths dispelled. From the studio gym where excuses never apply. It's Superhuman Radio with your host, Carl Lenore. Welcome back to another episode of Superhuman Radio. Today is Tuesday, and uh, we will be performing the Blueprint Power Hour in just a moment with my co-host, Coach Rob Regish. Uh, before we do that, we have to pay homage to uh, our title sponsor, and that is, of course, uh, Legendary Foods. And you hear me talk about them all the time, but that's because they're a wonderful, wonderful company that produces amazing products. If you haven't tried the Tasty Pastry yet, you're missing out on an opportunity to be satisfied snacking without all the guilt uh, the tasty pastry is basically a pop tart upgraded with uh, less than three or four grams of impact carbs less than one gram of sugar and nine grams of high quality protein you will think that you are cheating uh, but you're not and that's the best way to cheat and then of course uh, they also have some amazing nut butters and uh, seasoned nuts that you can get there using the code SHR10 will save you 10% off your entire order. Show them some love. They contribute a great deal of money to keep this show going. Uh, eatlegendary.com. Uh, check them out. And uh, without further delay, I'm going to go ahead and play Coach Rob's music here in just a second. Here we go. Bam. Calling all Blueprint Army. Fall in line. It's time for the Blueprint Power Hour with Coach Rob Regish on the Superhuman Radio Network. How you doing, Rob? I'm doing great. Oh, I Rob, have, I'm sorry. Uh, I had your mic killed. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm doing really good. Um, Molly the Wonder Dog has her head in my lap. Good. <laughs> and they're quiet for now, so <laughs> it's a good day, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hey, I meant to tell you, um, I was in was it Vitamin World or Vitamin Shop this morning. Right. And I saw Legendary Foods, um, what is it, the nut butters? The nut butters and, and the seasoned nuts. I know, they're out there. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, hey, <laughs> you know, grab me one of those. And uh, and I did, so I'll let you know how it which, tastes. Which flavor did you get? Do you remember? Uh, is there like a chocolate peanut butter one? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's Elisa's favorite. That's yeah, thing. that's hard. <laughs> that's hard not to like. So, um, yeah. I'll I'll certainly let you know. I'm starting my diet today. But, Look who's uh, watching I'm live, sure Dylan Gutro. Hey, <laughs> nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah. No, they're great. There's nothing like them. There really isn't. I mean, they're they're fantastic. They're the best nut butters out there. There's no sugar added, and most of them have virtually no sugar at all, if any. It's just from the residual amount of sugar that you find naturally in some of the fruit that they use. Um. But yeah, they're fe and and they're seasoned nuts. I mean, I love them. They, they I don't, I'm not a big fan of almonds. I realized I used to eat them because they were good for me, right? Uh, but now I enjoy almonds because of their seasoned almonds. They're fantastic. So. Well, if, if they're not seasoned, they're kind of bland. <laughs> it's yeah. I know they're great for you and everything, but my God, you know, compared to a regular almond, I'm sure it's it's a dessert. Dylan, don't you work at a gym? Aren't you a personal trainer? Don't you work at a gym? He said he's watching at work and he hopes he doesn't get in trouble. <laughs> it's all good, man. Yeah, one of the first times he's able to watch live. I'm on lunch. Ha ha ha. Okay, cool. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Oh, and look who else is joining us today. John Peaks. Very good. nice. Nice. Um, I'm in California today picking up. Let's see what he's picking up. Picking up uh, produce. It's in short supply. I'm uh, on a two day, a day two, uh, trying to pick up, I uh, load to pick up this load. I can't read it all. None of the warehouses have produce. Yeah, that's amazing. People like John, my good friend Mike Agresto, yeah. they are the they are the quiet warriors of this whole pandemic because the reason that toilet paper keeps showing up, the reason that food keeps showing up, is because guys and gals like this. Um, drive day and night to keep things going at this critical time. If truck drivers stopped doing what they do, we'd all starve to death, literally, like quickly. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, as bad as things are now, imagine without those people 
how much panic would set in when the food supply dries up or the toilet paper supply. So many thanks. You guys are heroes too, no question. Look at that. Dylan works at a mortgage company. So those of you who look to buy a house, reach out to him on Facebook, Dylan <laughs> Goutreau. There you go. There you go. Fantastic. And oh, the mornings and evenings, uh, he's at the gym once it opens back up on the 18th. So that's cool. Keeping people. I got to tell you, I'm going to talk about this at the end of today's show. Um, I know what it feels like to be 62 now. And it's because I haven't been in the gym and I'm really pissed off at my governor and all governors who don't think gyms are essential. That's going to be the, my rant at the end of today's show. So stick around for that. The first question comes from Sean Riley. I looked up the study you mentioned about ECTI causing kidney issues, and it is very concerning. You said you were going to look into it further. Can you tell me what you found? And should I stop taking ECTI until more studies are done? Yeah. Um, when I first came across this study, it, it was alarming. There's no question about it. Uh, so I knew I needed to do a deeper dive into it. And I, and I have, in, in fact, completed uh, my review of that and some very interesting anomalies not captured in the study headline. That headline, by the way, was as follows. Ectisone elicits chronic renal impairment via mineral corticoid-like pathogenic activities. And so their premise then is that the structure of ectisone is almost identical to al aldosterone, thus causing renal impairment within two weeks uh, of their experiment using rats, I think it was, but nonetheless, um, very concerning, right? So, so first things first though, this is a great lesson insofar is you need to read the entire study, not just the abstract. Because had you just read, let's say the study headline or the abstract, you would have arrived at, at best, an incorrect conclusion. Here's why. As I read through this study, I kept noticing something peculiar. They weren't using the term ectisterone, they were using the term ectosone. Now, Interestingly enough, over the years and still today, many, many supplement companies, including people who should know better, publicly stated that these two are the same thing, ectisone and ectisterone. They are not. You need only look it up. The molecular structure is different, and that matters. It matters a whole hell of a lot. In fact, these researchers were not using beta ectisterone, but rather alpha ectisone. Mm. Unfortunate, and yeah, and unfortunately, it isn't until the very end of the study, buried way in the back, where the researchers made that distinction. So listen to what they said. Quote, 3D molecular modeling and simulations in this study predicted that ectisone targets the ligand binding domain, LBD, or MR, mineral corticoid receptor, as occurred with aldosterone. In contrast to this paradigm, we found that 20E, which is an abbreviation for 20-hydroxy-beta ectisterone, produced no phenotypes in our cellular assays, while ectisone itself was strikingly potent. If ectosone indeed binds to the mineral corticoid receptor, its structure must be uniquely mimic an activating feature of aldosterone that is absent from 20E. That difference, by the way, the, between the two is the addition of a single hydroxyl group at C20 which gives you 20 beta hydroxy ectosterone. So, so if you buy a full spectrum ecti product does it have this ectosome in it if it does i've never seen it 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 the only place that i have seen it it seems to have been synthesized from something and so and that would make sense because if it does exist uh in the ec ectosome products that i've taken over the last 35 years you know, I, it would have shown up. There would have been a big problem. There would be a huge problem in the general population. And, and in fact, that's not what's happening. So here's the bottom line. You needn't stop 
taking ectisterone. I'm not aware of a single ectisone product on the market. And I looked and I looked for a long time. Um, so you don't need to stop taking ectisterone because this study clearly does not indicate that chemical, nor any of its associated ectisterones. There are over 500 now found in most supplements. In fact, those compounds are being researched for their activity in the treatment of several degenerative diseases. And for more on that, you can just Google the following terms, ectisterone and its activity on some degenerative diseases. You're gonna read a study showing just how beneficial this compound really is to human health. One little sidebar about this issue. Uh, in the near future, possibly next month issue, I'm going to be writing in the bulletin about a dirt cheap, very common, over-the-counter ingredient that when added to ectisterone makes a noticeable, if not profound, boost in strength. And I am really excited about this one because I think a lot of people are going to benefit. So that's the story on ectisone, ectisone versus ectisterone. You needn't fear ectisterone. And most of the ectisterone products, are they full spectrum or are they isolates of, of the plant that you want? Today, most of them are standardizing for 20-hydroxy ectisterone. I'm not a particular fan of that, but the fact remains most are 20 beta hydroxy. Full, there are several um, full spectrum products, such as Synthogen, uh, which retain what I call nature's fingerprint. There are dozens of ectisterones in Raponticum, and more and more are being studied every day. And if anything, Raponticum's effect on human health, indeed in every man, mammal that they've ever tested it, has only shown benefit. Dave Hartnett makes a great point. Just stick to trusted brands like Rob mentions and be aware uh, or beware of, you know, the bulk powders that they sell on Amazon dirt cheap because you may end up getting a product that's high in ectisone. Uh, right. And, 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 you know, and that's the other thing. Like if a, if a full spectrum ectisterone product has a small minuscule amount of ectisone, well, that may actually produce some diuretic effects that would be tolerable and wanted. But if you're taking a product that's high in ectosone, now we have another. And, then, and, this, and, and the other thing to consider is when you're taking a full spectrum product, through evolution, it has evolved with balanced amounts of different things. Like we take, take a cup of coffee, for instance. You can take a cup of coffee that has 300 milligrams of caffeine in it. But there are right. other things in that coffee that slow the absorption and delivery of caffeine. If you took the same 300 milligrams of caffeine in hydrus, you're going to have the jitters. You're going to feel like crap. So right. when we look at these plant sources, quite often when they're taken together, they don't have uh, the effects, negative or positive, that you see when you have isolated compounds from those plant sources. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and Raponticum is a great example, right? It's loaded with tannins and resins and all sorts of other stuff that contributes to its, its benefits. So, you know, in my mind, anyway, the more man tries to overstandardize for what he thinks is the active chemical, the, the more and more problems you run into, as opposed to just you know, take nature with few exceptions. Nature doesn't mess up, you know, and, and, and he even says that when you look at these labels on some of these bulk powders, they actually say 98 percent ectisterone, ectisone and dio diocins. So, you know, if they're telling you that it's in there, then maybe stay away from it. That's the other yeah. thing. And I mean, you, need, you don't have to do much digging to find out where they're coming from. They're coming from China. Yeah. And who knows what else is in there then? Right. Uh, the next question comes from uh, Aaron Stone. I'm just starting out with weightlifting and came across your show. What exercises do I do to build my biceps up the most? Do I need a preacher's curl? Are dumbbell curls as good as barbell? Uh, thank you for the show. I really like it. 
Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and it's a, it's a common question, especially amongst people that are just starting. You know, young males getting into weight training, they don't want the big guns. But first things first, it sounds like he is bodybuilding and, and not weightlifting is that, you know, he used that term and, and there's a difference and there's a reason I'm making that distinction. Bodybuilding, of course, is more focused on building as much lean body mass as possible with as you know, lowest body fat levels you can get to, of course, show that all off. Weightlifting, on the other hand, in the classical sense is different. We're talking about cleans, clean and jerks and the snatch. What you'll notice is that weightlifters, for the most part, don't look like bodybuilders um, and, and vice versa. There are some similarities, but, um, you know, the differences are, have much to do with the training. If you think about it, the weightlifting movements that I just mentioned, there is no negative or eccentric component involved right, in the exercise. However, <laughs> I want you to notice this. Uh, Weightlifters typically, especially if you go to a seminar sometime, they have some of the best backs in the business. They really stand out. So although there is not a negative component to, to some of the lifts that they're doing, they have tremendous back development. So, but as for as for you, um, the biceps and bodybuilding, the that equation is going to be a little different. So, first thing you need to understand is it takes it takes adding about 10 to 15, sometimes 20 pounds of body weight to add an inch to your arms. And that isn't easy because, and believe it or not, it sounds counterintuitive, but it involves a lot of squatting, a lot of deadlifting, and a lot of heavy eating. And so it's imperative then that you work hard on those exercises, right? Adding weight, of course, wherever possible. You'll also need to use a tape measure. And I don't mean for just around your arms. You need to keep an eye on your waist measurement because I never forget who, who told me this and it's so true. It's a lot easier to eat another inch onto your waist than it is onto your arms. So once that measurement around the waist increases by an inch or more, cut back on the food for, food for a few weeks. And then when you reintroduce higher calories, uh, your body will be more receptive to it. Having said all of that, in my opinion, the finest movement for developing your arms is the humble chin-up. And in particular, uh, close grip, palms up, right? The reasons are twofold. Number one, it works the muscle, the bicep, from origin, shoulder, to insertion, elbow. As every other type of curl works, the muscle through only one joint, typically the elbow. The reason number two is uh, it when the body and weight move through space simultaneously, the central nervous system and therefore muscle recruitment is at a much, much higher activation level. It's the same reason why squats beat leg presses any day and why pull-ups beat pull-downs, right, on a pulley. Uh, now, if you're going to perform a curl, I favor the hammer curl, especially if you're deadlifting with a mixed grip. Um, also, understand two-thirds of your arm development are your triceps, right? Not your biceps. So if you're going to skew your volume and intensity on one side, I would do so towards the triceps, right? Nevertheless, um, heavy pushing and pulling exercises, compound lifts, give the biceps and triceps respectively a great growth stimulus, particularly if you superset a pushing exercise with a pulling exercise. There's no need, in my opinion, for concentration curls, for dumb dumbbell kickbacks, and these little, little movements that all they do is take it out of you. They're not stimulating a, a, a lot of growth. You want to keep it to big, basic compound lifts with, of course, a lot of weight, you know, focusing on progression from week to week. Now, that's not to say that you can't lighten up, you know, let's say every other workout or every third workout where you have a session where you focus primarily on volume and total tonnage. 
uh, and as, as well as time under tension, which is something that's been found to be very important um, for actual hypertrophy, uh, most time under tension models um, are between 40 and 60 seconds. I've seen others that go higher, some that go lower, but generally speaking, the 40 to 60 second mark is where you want to end up. I'll finish this with one interesting note, at least it was from my perspective. My arms only started growing when I dropped all direct arm work. Uh, and and I just instead, I just poured myself into big pushing and pulling movements. And I'm talking about, you know, supersetting things like dips and chin-ups or uh, bench presses and seated cable rows. It's always a good idea to superset them and shoot for the same number of reps. And this is the other big thing. Uh, in order to stay healthy, you need a balance between the pushing and pulling muscles. You, look, you need look no further than the shoulder for evidence of this. Most guys, big, overdeveloped front delts. Why? A lot of benching, a lot of curling, very small rear delts, consequently. It's only a matter of time, right, before that imbalance becomes an injury. So keeping them in balance is something um, that I think is, is a great idea, especially supersetting. And that's, that's my input on how to build big arms. If all, those of you looking, are going, man, Carl isn't even paying attention to Coach Rob. He's over there texting people. And the guy just set up an amazing package with Be Strong, the blood flow restriction people. Yep. Right now on the air, I did this. I had a brainstorm. So Be Strong makes an upper arm BFR system and a leg BFR system. Sold together, they are $429. They sell the upper arm bands alone for two eighty eight because you have to get the whole kit plus the bands, and then if you buy the legs, it's just the band, the extra bands because you already have the whole kit, all the app, and all the other stuff. So I just texted with Sean Whalen, and I got him to agree to go from two eighty eight to one ninety nine. Wow! On the upper arm blood flow restrict. Look, everything that Coach Rob just said is exactly spot on. Heavy back work. Builds big biceps, big brachials. Okay, your biceps don't stop here; they they stop down here in the brachial radialis. So all those heavy push pulling movements, they build big biceps. I've never really trained biceps. I don't have big biceps, but they have grown just from the back work I've done. Yeah. With that being said, I'm saying this again: better than anabolic steroids. And I'm not kidding. We've done shows on this with people from the audience unscripted, who used BFR bands and saw their upper arms grow an inch or more in short periods of time. So right now, if you go to the website, bestrong.training, it's bestrong.training, and use the code SHR, and just buy the upper arm bands. You'll get them for $199. Everything that Coach Rob said is true. And if you use these bands while you're following his direction, you'll see even better results. Your upper arms will explode. You will have the upper arms that you dream of having using those techniques and the Be Strong dot training bands. Use the code SHR. Let me put the code up here. And it's like uh, it's like uh, almost $100 off. You, you'll, get, you'll get the whole package for $199. There you go. Wow. That's what you'll get. So... Go to bestrong.training, use the code SHR, get the upper arm bands for $199. After you've used them for a month, email me at onair at superhumanradio.net, and I'll have you on the show because I guarantee you're going to want to come and talk about your results. These things work. And in fact, once I start going back to the gym, this is what I'm going back to. I'm going back to using the BFR bands initially to regain the muscle mass that I've lost. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Next question. Let yeah. me see where we are time-wise. Hold on a second here. I'm trying to stay on a clock now. Okay. Martin Keegan. Excuse me. I hate cardio worse than you do. <laughs> and prefer not to do it. I like heavy lifting, and I, I, I like lifting heavy things. So anything above five reps is cardio to me. Haha. <laughs> However, I just turned 40, and my doctor says I need to do something. You seem pretty well-versed. 
let me read the rest of this. I'm sorry, some of it got caught, cut off here. Not everything shows up. When some of these uh, questions are longer, uh, they don't uh, they don't carry over. Um, you seem uh, well versed. Shoot, where was I? You seem pretty well versed in alternative approaches to things. If you were me, what would you do? Well, uh, the first thing I do is get a complete understanding as to why your doctor said what he said. Because typically, you know, if a doctor is, is getting after you like that, um, something is awry. You know, and in, in fact, uh, you know, because everybody's so sensitive today, a lot of people are pretty far gone, right? By the time a doctor says, look, you don't start paying attention to diet and exercise, you're going to be diabetic. And 15 years out, the amputation starts. So, <laughs> you know, have at it. That'd be the first thing I would do. Um, but because I don't know him, I, I'm going to need to make some assum assumptions. Most males that are still lifting heavy at age 40 bring with them other habits, right, for the ride into middle age. And more than a few have done no cardio at all. And this is the boat, boat that I was in when I turned 30. I remember saying to myself all throughout my 20s, yeah, cardio. Nobody ever got big doing cardio. I'll start when I'm 30. Um, but 30 came and went, and I, I still wasn't doing any cardio. Then I started to read West Side stuff about GPP, general physical preparedness. Um, and in particular, I'll never forget this. There was an article written by Dave Tate who related a story of visiting uh, some university where, you know, he was about to lecture. He's going to give a seminar on the West Side Method. To get to the lecture hall, though, from where they parked their car, they had to climb this big hill. Him and Louis Simmons had to go up this huge hill. And when they got to the top, Dave could not go any farther. He literally could see, he said he could not walk. He was so out of breath after climbing just one hill. Now, Louis, on the other hand, he was just fine. And so, you know, what was the difference? Well, something called GPP or general physical preparedness that Louis was huge on. In fact, Dave said it used to drive him nuts that Louis would drag the sled before training. He would drag the sled after training. He would drag the sled pretty much when he wasn't, you know, in the gym lifting weights or teaching. So um, he dove in and found out what I did. And that is, it not only is not going to take away from your heavy weightlifting, it's going to contribute to it. And so the way I started was the way I recommend that you start. I want you to buy a sled, okay? Um, I bought one, I used it, and I saw the difference it made. And you know, not only does it speed recovery, but it gives the heart and lungs a great workout too. And if you've get, if you've got one, even a simple one that you that you can just pull, never mind push, you know what I'm talking about. Um, now, some people, for whatever reason, they don't want to drag a sled. Looks a little funny. I know I why. Have... I know why. Because it's hard friggin' work. Yeah. Well, if that's hard work then he's really going to like my next suggestion. If you're not going to drag a sled and you love your weight, I would tell you to be start doing dumbbell step-ups because stepping up onto a bench or a platform while holding right a lot of weight in each hand is not just great for your legs and your glutes and your quads and your hams. It builds tremendous grip strength and traps as well. If you've ever... You know, if you've ever chalked up and done this. Now, the height of the step matters. A low one works mostly quadriceps. A higher one uh, works mostly your glutes and hams, where, uh, you know, in the middle does a nice job hitting everything. My point is you don't have to use just one height. You can have various workouts, right, in various records for various size boxes. Now, if all of that wasn't enough, um, your heart and lungs will be challenged beyond words. 
in step ups. And I'm not kidding here, okay? It's worse than pushing and pulling the prowler, in my opinion, at least when you use a substantial amount of weight. And so what I did last week was I grabbed 75 pound dumbbells, which in retrospect were probably too heavy, but I do 10 reps per leg and I rest one minute in between sets. I think I made it through three, three sets, and then I had to reduce weight. Um, the point here is once I'm able, once you can complete all five sets of 10 reps for each leg, um, I jumped the weight 10 pounds, which is really 20 pounds if you think about it, right? If you're using dumbbells or one leg, blocks, right? Because right? you're, you're holding two. Alternatively, put a weight vest on. I don't care what it is, but once you can perform 50 reps with each leg, you should be in damn good, not just strength shape, but, you know, cardiovascular. Building up to that level, especially with weights like that, is a tremendous accomplishment. It really is. Even better, there's no equipment for you to buy, right? Assuming you already have dumbbells or or you could just even hold on to plates or rocks for all I, all I care, you know, and find a step somewhere. Everybody's got steps, either maybe in their house or, you know, go to an athletic field where they have bleachers. Here's the bottom line. Uh, sled dragging is great stuff. It is restorative, and it builds muscle. It builds heart and lungs. Heavy step-ups, on the other hand, do much the same and they too were a Russian staple. The exercise is called Russian st uh, step ups, going back to the research that they did on them and how much that movement was used by their Olympic athletes. They build not only enormous strength, but stimulate tons of muscle growth in the process, and you get in better cardiovascular shape fast. So give that a shot. I know you'd be very pleased with either one or both. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we have a, a question from a live viewer, Kirkland or Letty. Actually, qu a comment and a question uh, we're going to get to. So right now, while you're watching the show, there's a little button right beneath your video window. And it says, uh, start a watch party. It's a harmless button. People are afraid of it. But if you click it, it won't hurt you. But what will happen is friends of yours will be notified that you're watching this show. That's all. And they may become curious and think, well, let me see what Dylan is watching or what Dave is watching. And they'll click and watch the show, too. And who knows? Maybe someone will learn something that will improve the quality of their lives. It, it's a painless little thing. You see the little button? It's right down there, right there. Yeah, you see it? Just click that button. Maybe wait till we come out of this commercial break so people come back to the show as it's uh, coming back with content instead of during the commercial break and help us spread the good word of becoming superhuman. We're going to take one quick commercial break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of your questions and comments. Here we go. Hey, this is Carl. For 14 years, you've heard me talk about can -see eye drops, and they being the reason that I do not need reading glasses at now 61 years old. But I regularly get emails and messages from people who've been using can -see and having some amazing results. Recently, I got an email from a fellow named Chad, who, because he was on dexamethasone eye drops for over six months, developed a cataract. can -see eye drops actually reduced my cataract to the point where even my doctor has a hard time finding it. I will never stop using can -see eye drops twice a day. I've been using them since 2008, he says. And you should be too. There is no better way to keep your eyes healthy and seeing clearly than can see eye drops. Go to wisechoicemedicine.com today and get on board and we will both be looking into the future with very clear vision. I love beef and if you love beef, listen up. I've discovered the best tasting beef in the world and that's not an exaggeration at piedmontese.com. 
The Piedmontese breed is famous from Italy for being lean and unbelievably tender with half the fat and calories of traditional beef. Even typically tough cuts are tender when it comes from the Piedmontese cows. And for the first time ever, Piedmontese cows are being raised here in the USA. Get two free 10-ounce New York strips when you purchase $50 or more at Piedmontese.com with code SHR. Go to P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E dot com and use code SHR today. You will never eat any other type of beef ever again. 7,451. That's how many people kick the bucket, buy the farm, or cash in their chips every day in the United States. Yep, that means five people are going to meet their maker during this commercial. And no, our commercials are not the cause. Half of those who punch the clock for the final time will do so without life insurance. Call Big Lou at Term Provider before you are number 7452. If you're a 50-year-old male, a tad porky with a touch of diabetes, $1 million of term life insurance may only cost about 200 bucks a month. With more verified five-star reviews than any other Lou on the radio, Big Lou has saved thousands of people thousands on their term insurance premiums. Stop procrastinating and call Big Lou today at 800-560-0301. 800-560-0301. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He doesn't want to be number 7,452. Call 800-560-0301 or BigLou.com. Whether your goal is to build muscle or burn fat, you'll find everything you need at Redcon 1. Need help getting a good night's sleep? Try Fade Out or the most popular pre-workout supplement on the market today, Total War. Sign up for their new transformation challenge and win $10,000 or shop for apparel that people at the gym will know that you are serious about your training. Need a testosterone booster that works? Check out Boomstick. Whatever you need, you'll find the best quality supplements on the market at Redcon 1. Go to redcon1.com. That's R-E-D-C-O-N, the number one.com, or go to superhumanradio.net and click the Redcon 1 banner ad today. New Mass Pro Synthogen X2 just upped its own legendary game. To distance itself even further from the rest of the pack, Synthogen X2 now has double the key active ingredients. If you've ever wondered what steroid-like recovery feels like, Synthogen X2 delivers. See why others compare it favorably to powerful bodybuilding drugs at Synthogen.com. Mass Pro Synthogen. When you train with it, you'll gain with it. Welcome back. I got my mask here. And I go to Kroger's. <laughs> I put it on. I got my everyday carry 45 right here. So it's just a thin line between me becoming, going from just a shopper to a desperado. So there you go. Walk into a but I, like I have self-control, so you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> Kirkland Warletti has a really couple good good comments and uh, he says have ever, either of you looked at into uh any of the research concerning using weighted vests or for weight loss the extra load apparently activates osteocytes to suppress appetite independent of leptin signaling uh it's referred to as the gravistat effect i believe james krieger who's been a guest on the show a uh, few times starting way back to like, 2006 i was still a clear channel the first time i had him on he wasn't a doctor then either uh is an advocate of this by the way the b strong band uh to one to two sets to all out failure on arms with weighted stretches at the end gives plenty of stimulus and a lot of time to recover he's a big fan of the b strong bands also obviously so yeah you can get those right now <clears throat> if you go to the website bstrong.training and use the code SHR you'll pay instead of 288 199 for the upper arm bands which is a real bargain and this is an investment that you won't feel bad about you'll use them for the rest of your lives you'll see results from them which is more than you can say from a lot of different supplements out there so check them out yeah. show them some love and we're actually going to make this a campaign um, I was just texting with Sean Whalen, and we're going to do this. So we're going to have banner ads up on the website. Uh, so this will go on for a little while longer. So, but don't don't wait too long. I don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, let's see here. Chuck Gill says, "I'm 300 plus pound 
powerlifter, but getting older and looking to make change. Good, good idea. I really like what you said about body weight stuff, and in particular, the handstand push-up, but not at 300 pounds, brother. <laughs> uh, if you can do a single handstand push-up at 300 pounds, I I'm going to fly wherever you live, and I'm going to take you out to dinner. Uh, believe it or not, I'd, I'd kill to be able to do just one. Exactly. Where do I start? Well, as you said, um, the first step in, in bringing body weight work into the fold, especially where none existed before, is actually a change in psychology before we get to the weight. And I know that sounds all Zen-like, but, but it really is true. You need to attach the amount of importance and respect that you have um, for traditional weighted movements like the bench squat or deadlift to body weight work. Because like, as you just said, man, this is a great point because people figure I can squat 700 pounds. Surely I can do body weight work. What, what's the big deal? Right. Right. And so uh, just to give you an idea for something like the chin up, it's universal and people looking at it and saying, Whoa, that's a strong dude because you can, you can walk in any gym in the world. And if you see some guy doing true one arm chin ups or, or let's say two arm, two arm chin ups with a hundred pounds around his waist, it, it registers and it will get you noticed obviously in a very good way. The handstand push up, in my opinion is a very close second because it is one of the, few body weight exercises where 100% right of your body weight is being lifted others like push-ups and and some other things yeah it's it's hard but you're not lifting a hundred percent it's close but the handstand push-up is right up there just seeing someone do that do some with their body weight is mighty impressive so you know, everyone understands how strong you, you have to be to pull them off, just like the chin up. The first step, though, in being able to do that uh, is, let's be honest, right? Losing fat. And notice I didn't say lose weight. I said fat. Big difference. As you lose more and more fat, the handstand push up, and in fact, all of your body weight work, obviously, is going to get easier. The next tool that you want to use for these to for learning how to do these uh is to purchase those interlocking foam mats the, the, the same kind you sometimes see that protect floors or, or kids play on sometimes i found them in three places i've seen them in walmart i've seen them in target and i've seen them at a place called ocean state job lot which is a chain that we got up here discount stuff alternatively right? You can use other things. You can use a stack of books. You could use a stack of rugs. You could use a, you know, a stack of just about anything. But the fact of the matter is the mats are nice to work with because they're a uniform quarter inch thickness, which becomes important as you move from week to week to week. What you want to do is stack all of the mats up. Let's say you probably need eight of them for an average size weight trainer and chalk your hands, which I'll get to in a second. You wanna place your hands just outside of the mat uh, for width, let's say around, and they need to be about uh, six to 10 inches from the wall. You know, if you're putting your hands right against the wall, it's gonna be very difficult for you to, to hold that position. They need to be a few inches out. Uh, now, here's where the chalk in the hands tip comes in. By doing so, you're gonna leave a faint outline of where your hands were, right? During that, you, exactly where you placed them during the last set or even the last workout. You know, in, in my old gym, uh, I could still see, right, the outline of my hands there from the week before. Uh, you will absolutely be shocked at how much harder it is, a handstand push up is, if you just move your, let's say, hands in one hand length or even out one hand length. So knowing where to place your hands is crucial. And now over time, yes, you will naturally assume the correct hand width and distance from the wall. But when you're learning it, especially when you're learning it, it helps to have the visual reference. So use the chalk. Then 
you need to practice kicking up into a handstand against the wall. This is extremely difficult for some people. This takes, in some cases, believe it or not, months to learn. But in due time, you will learn how to do it. In the early, and here's a funny story, in the early stages of learning it, you tend to, let's say, kick with a little too much force because you don't want to come up short and then flop back down, right? Well, I did this a couple times and unfortunately punched a couple of really nice holes in the wall <laughs> <laughs> with my heels. And Jim Order didn't like that too much. <laughs> Fortunately, he was an understanding guy. But uh, again, that's something that you're going to learn with time, how much force right, to kick up with. You, um, what you want to do is attempt to hold that handstand for... Once you can hold, let's say, two sets for 30 seconds or so, you will, <laughs> you will be strong enough to start performing partial reps. And these partial reps, once you can do, let's say, five on, on eight mats, uh, you slide another mat out, and now you're working with seven. Build the reps up to five again, go to six, and so forth, until such time as you're performing uh, full range repetitions. Now, let's get back to the weight vest. Kirkland made a very pertinent example. I wasn't aware of the science that he cited for fat loss about wearing the weight vest. But I will tell you this, um, once you can perform reps with your own body weight, uh, getting a, an adjustable weight vest with the little, I guess the little sandbags are two pounds a piece. You know, start with two or four pounds and, and pull a couple reps off and build up and build up until you're able to do handstand shoulder presses with your body weight plus another 25 pounds. Success is simply a matter of perseverance. And, and that has that is exceptionally true in the case of the handstand shoulder press. You want to keep at it because let's say uh, – a 200, say you're 300 pounds now, a 275 pound man, or even a 250 pound man who can pull that off and do reps, that is incredibly impressive. As an added bonus, your shoulders and elbows will feel great. You will not believe the pump that you get in your shoulders. And I don't know why, I, I, I would surmise because your body assumes the correct anatomical position. But because of my severe arthritis in my right arm, any type of overhead work with a barbell, impossible, impossible, shooting, stabbing pains. However, when I go and perform handstand shoulder presses, I feel nothing. I don't even think about it. It blows my mind that I'm able to do that. So, you know, what does that tell me? It is what I call an anatomically authentic or correct exercise. That's not going to wear down your joints. If anything, it'll just build them up. Patrick Rogers says he's working from home, listening to SHR. He says, got to love quarantine. And I agree with him. <laughs> For some reason, it didn't show up on our, uh, our messages here. So we're going to go to the next, uh, next question. here. The next one comes from Andrew Barker. I know Andrew. He's a great guy. Great last couple of episodes uh, of the Blueprint Power Hour on SHR. Could you elaborate more on the differences between pregnenolone and progesterone and if there are any synergies with stacking them, please? Also, dosing given one's sex. Yeah. And I have to say, I learned a lot researching this. I thought I knew what the story was on pregnenolone and progesterone. Um, and I, I had part of it, but not as not as much as I thought. So... Uh, progesterone is known as a female hormone, but interestingly, males need progesterone to make uh, testosterone and some other so, hormone. So let's, so let's, let, let's clear up something. I just did a show about this. There is no such thing as male hormones and female hormones. We all, men and women, have the same array of hormones, just in different ratios. Doctors who say testosterone is a male hormone, that's a stupid doctor. Doctors who say estrogen is a female hormone, that's a stupid doctor. That's a doctor that is not observant of science. Women have more estrogen than men, 
but men have estrogen too. Men have more testosterone than women, but women have testosterone too. So we need to dispel. I just did a show called, you know, the oversimplification of estrogen and testosterone for this reason, because there are still doctors out there who don't even deserve to have medical licenses. I got to be honest with you. I know I'm being hard, but sometimes you got to push the pendulum all the way to one way to get some response. There are doctors out there who are telling women, you don't need testosterone. That's going to make you a man. Well, she's had testosterone since she went through puberty. It didn't make her a man then. So please, I'm sorry, but that's a real pet peeve of mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, well, let's take pregnant alone first. It is considered by many to be the, the mother of all hormones uh, being made from cholesterol. So it's cholesterol, pregnenolone, DHEA, androstenedione, androstenediol, and then testosterone. And interestingly enough, it can go back to androstenediol, which I miss an awful lot. <laughs> but um, pregnenolone also drops in both men and women. Uh, to give you an idea, between ages 35 and 70, a, a man's pregnenolone levels can drop by as much as 60%. So obviously, you know, big, big drop. In mice, pregnenolone is the most potent known memory enhancer. In humans, it improves attention and has been shown to decrease arthritis pain, uh, which I couldn't understand the mechanism. But in most studies, it failed, interestingly enough, it failed to uh, improve memory. Interestingly, pregnenolone is the precursor of progesterone. And progesterone can then be converted into cortisol, okay? 11-deoxycortisol and then cortisol. And, you know, cortisol gets a, a bad rap, right? Why would you need cortisol? Well, because it's when released into the bloodstream, Cortisol helps to control blood pressure. It regulates metabolism and, and blood sugar levels. It decreases inflammation and it improves memory. Sometimes we forget the good things that cortisol does, right? And so that's, those are a few examples. The usual dose of pregnenolone are anywhere between 25 and 100 milligrams a day uh, for men and women with optimal blood levels around 200 nanograms per deciliter, at least from my reading. Life Extension, uh, for those interested, makes a really good pregnenolone product. You should, as, as with all hormone levels, you should work with your doctor. Get right? tested. Yeah. Right. Get, get it tested to optimize the doses of, of what you're taking. Normal progesterone levels, you know, <laughs> in women as in other, as in everything with women, they're incredibly complex. You know, they, they range, uh, there's a pre-ovulation value, ovulation, post-ovulation, you know, cycles of the moon. I don't know <laughs> all that mystery crap. In, in men, it's found in much lower levels typically, um, typically less than 0 0.20 nanograms per deciliter. My advice would be, if you're a woman, get your levels tested and then consider using 25 to 50 milligrams of pregnenolone and working to get it into the optimal range, 200 nanograms per deciliter. And as a man, I would do the same, but I would think he would need more pregnenolone uh, daily, maybe 100 milligrams or, or more. Pre progesterone levels in males and females should obviously then be measured and getting them into the ideal ranges that I, I mentioned earlier. The whole cascade to me is extremely interesting. And when I say cascade, I mean cholesterol, pregnenolone, DHEA, and just right all the way through testosterone or estrogen, as you pointed out, males and females need both. Um, and sometimes that chain gets disrupted. And so that, that'd be another conversation with your doctor. But here's the bottom line. Optimizing pregnenolone and de facto progesterone levels is obviously, in my opinion, it's a really good idea. Why? Because too many times, especially as men, we think testosterone. Got to get on HRT. It's my testosterone levels are low. Well, that might be true. 
But finding out why that's true is really important. And high testosterone levels at the expense of low DHEA and pregnenolone levels is not optimal. And they will be low because if you supplement with testosterone, the precursor hormones that are specifically designed to lead to testosterone production are also blunted. And so you will see a drop. Cholesterol levels will not feed progesterone and pre- well, pregnenolone and then progesterone and then DHEA. And so you, you, you have to backload with these things. This is something we learned. Dr. John Crystal was a staunch advocate backloading these hormones when you're on HRT. And it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's true. And the other thing I want to point out is men get male pattern baldness when they go on HRT, those who are sensitive to DHT. Well, guess what stops the production of DHT? Progesterone. Stops the production? Progesterone actually stops the production of DHT. So if you're wow. somebody on HRT and you notice your hair is thinning, you need to have your, D, your your progesterone levels tested, and you have to talk to your doctor about supplementing with progesterone so you stop producing so much DHT. And lastly, a study that we just covered on the show two weeks ago shows that pregnenolone has the ability to reverse multiple sclerosis, the effects of multiple sclerosis on the brain. Wow. Both, both lesions and shrinking of the brain. So... These hormones are very important. We don't pay attention to them, and doctors don't pay attention to them. And as time evolves, men are real, they're realizing men are just about as complex as women, and we need more than just testosterone. And so, you've got to pay attention to all the hormones, absolutely. And this is why when people reach out to me, they say, "Um, You know, I feel this, I feel that, I think I need to be on testosterone. I say, Well, have you had blood work done? No. Well, why don't you have blood work done first? And then right. decide whether or not you need to be on testosterone because yeah. that's really the right way to do this. You, you know, this shooting in the dark, oh, I think I need this, oh, I think I need that, doesn't get you anywhere. And in fact, it'll add symptoms that you don't even need added. We've got to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we have more questions. Please feel free to post your comments and questions here. If you're on the Superhuman Radio Network page watching the show, I can put your questions and comments up on the screen. We'll be right back with more. Stay tuned. Now, the number one best-selling non-hormonal anabolic agent at PredatorNutrition.com. Progenidrex has established itself as the category killer. If you're having difficulty gaining muscle while staying lean, you owe it to yourself to try Progenidrex. 100% of store reviews rated it at five stars, the highest possible ranking. And today, right now, there are guys pouring their hearts out in the gym with a little or nothing to show for it. Don't waste any more time. Go to PredatorNutrition.com today and get Progenidrex, the world's absolute best drug-free muscle gainer how often do you sit with your laptop right on your lap how much time do you spend on your cell phone are you in a technology-packed office monday through friday are you worried about this type of radiation now there's something you can do about it getlams.com this radiation has been linked to infertility in men glandular tumors gut microbiome dysbioses and impaired sleep quality now you can provide 360 degree protection to at-risk parts of your body with radiation proof apparel from getlams.com comfortable breathable and 99 percent effective go to getlams.com and use coupon code SHR for 20% off your order of $100 or more. That's getlams.com, G E T L A M B S.com, and code SHR. Men and women, you've heard about hormone optimization. Do you feel like it's something you want to look into? RenewLifeRx.com is the place to start. Their doctors can help you with the solutions. RenewLifeRx.com has a simple process for lab work, consultation, and taking a deep dive into where your hormone levels can be improved. Superhuman radio listeners get 30% off. Off your initial lab work and consultation. Go to RenewLifeRx.com to schedule your no-obligation phone consultation today. Feel younger, get in better shape, and be more productive at RenewLifeRx.com. Crank your muscle gains to new heights by transforming every gram of protein you eat into three grams with mass signs. 
With 100,000 HUTs of protease per capsule, Masszymes increases your absorption of key amino acids, resulting in stronger, healthier digestion of proteins and certain vitamins that not only multiplies the impact of the protein you eat, but can also repair a damaged intestinal wall. Go to Masszymes Flash SHR for 10% off. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S dot com slash SHR. Quest Nutrition makes bars, cookies, chips, and pizzas out of complete dairy-based proteins. Our products minimize net carbs and sugar without sacrificing taste. Each delicious chocolate-flavored chip, cookie chunk, and crunchy crumble is custom-made to maintain Quest macros. It's time to enjoy foods that work for you, not against you. It's time to enjoy your Quest. This is the Superhuman Channel, where we use oxygen for the power of good. Yeah, I just want to clear something up. If you're watching the show from the Supima Radio uh, network page, your comments will appear, and I can put them up to uh, attribute some of the things you're saying or commenting about uh, to you. If you're on my personal page, if you're on the Superhuman uh, Nation page, if you're on any other page that the show has been shared on, your comments don't show up. So I saw uh, Henry... Belikov uh, make a comment on another page and then I said that and then he commented here so we can pay homage to him uh, listening to the show during his uh, COVID-19 shutdown. Always great to have him here. He's a super athlete, uh, amazing physique, very, very handsome, very talented dancer. I don't know how these guys dance the way they dance. It's amazing. They, they defy gravity. Henry's one of those people. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to go on to the uh, blueprint tip of the day, it looks like. And then after the blueprint tip of the day, we're going to take a break, and I got a rant for you. And, Coach, I want you to stay with me for the rant. Can you stay? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let's get the blueprint tip of the day done. And uh, what is the blue? Let me get it here. Let, what is the blueprint tip of the day, Coach? The tip of the day is, I call it, the only moment we have is now. So it was this past Saturday, a year ago, I lost a good friend of mine. His name was Doug. We shared the same birthday, the same love of training. We graduated the same year from high school. Uh, and he had just turned 50 a few months prior. And he was a great guy. And I know everybody says that when somebody dies. But he truly was. He was married with four kids, two sets of twins, three and four years old. Saturdays were his leg day. And, and I'll never forget the last Saturday I saw him. He was sitting on the leg extension. He was resting in between sets when all four of his little monsters, as he called them, came running into the gym and they hopped up on his lap. And it was one of the most heartwarming things you know, you'd ever see. The following Thursday, I was training uh, in the gym and my son, with my son, when the manager uh, came up to me and he, he walked up to me and he said, I've got some bad news. And so since my car had been hit in the parking lot, you know, recently, I jokingly asked him if it happened again. <laughs> yeah. And he said, uh, he had, I'll never forget the look, stone look on his face. He said, no, I'm afraid it's a lot worse than that. Doug was found unresponsive this morning by his wife, who also uh, teaches cardio classes in the gym. And he was pronounced dead by the EMT shortly after they arrived. The news absolutely stunned me. Um, because although he, he had severe issues with arthritis, he looked healthy as a horse. 250 pounds of lean muscle. He, all, he trained almost every day, and his favorite saying was, <laughs> never miss a workout. And by God, did he adhere to that. You know, he lived that mantra. He was always training because it was his escape. And now he was gone, just like that. He was a gentle giant. He was very soft-spoken and humble, very, especially for a guy his size. Um, and that was despite the fact that every joint in his body was riddled with arthritis. 
And by, you know, so to give you an idea, by age 40, he had not one, but two hip uh, replacements. So he was in constant pain and it was severe. And, you know, if you've never had severe arthritis, you can't even imagine what those days were like for him. You know, from the time he got out of bed to the time he fell asleep, the pain was excruciating. Even when he was taking meds for it, and I mean some pretty heavy-duty stuff. But despite that, I never heard him complain once. He was so happy to be in the gym with his people. It was it was his escape, you know? It was the place that he felt at home and the place that he called home. And we were his extended family. And nevertheless, death came. And when it did, it was sudden. And that was a big part of the shock of, it, of everything. Because either myself, my wife, or my son, sometimes all three of us, saw or spoke with Doug every day. The same way, you would see and talk to your family members or the you know spouse or significant other that you live with and then in an instant he was gone he was taken from me he was taken from his family and his friends by an unseen killer later it was said to be a heart attack and so we set up a gofundme page for him and it speaks volumes that that gofundme page the goal was 20,000 we blew that out of the water, the gym, mostly gym members, and and got to, got it to fifty thousand and change. And so I, of course, attended the funeral, and by the looks of it, hundreds, maybe thousands of other people did too. And waiting in line, you know, I saw all the pictures of the Doug that I knew, right? The guy he exuded power, and he was large and in charge in and out of the gym. When I got to the casket, though, it was obviously a different story. And I had great difficulty and still do in reconciling that. And what I'm talking about is I didn't want to believe he was really dead. The person lying there looked like someone else. It, looked, it didn't look like Doug at all. He looked frail. He looked pale. Uh, he was obviously dead, but still, right? It just played into the fact that, you know, logically I knew he was dead, but I didn't want him to be. I wanted this to be a mistake and there's somebody else was in this casket. Um, I didn't want to believe he was gone. I still don't. And I still look for him whenever I'm in the gym. And then shortly after his death, things started getting weird. And now let me be the first to state, I don't, I'm not a believer in any kind of this stuff. But in the weeks and months that followed, I had some very strange things happen that were well outside the realm of coincidence. Um, you know, it was everything from my cell phone playing 80s tunes when I got to the gym and only when I got to the gym. And it's not like they were on my playlist. And once I started listening to the lyrics, I got really freaked out. Uh, and I, I had visits from this cardinal that was pecking at my sliding glass door. And I kept blowing them off, blowing them off until I got up and actually went out there. You can Google what that means. Some Someday when you have time, Google red cardinal showing up. Um, there were other, even more unmistakable signs that I'd rather not go into. Um, but I think he knew how bad uh, I was struggling. And maybe he wanted me to know he was okay. Which brings me to you, everyone listening. At one point or another in our lives, we tend to take life for granted. You know, we'll get around to seeing our, our friends or calling them tomorrow, except tomorrow never comes for some people. Tomorrow never came for Doug. I can assure you that he was thinking, you know, 
he'd wake up tomorrow just like any other day. As a matter of fact, we had a chance conversation about a week before he died about death. And and he was he was joking, yeah, maybe I'll make it to 65 or 70 if he was lucky. And so I remember we laughed about that. And as it turned out, he had less than a week to live, less than a week with his wife and kids, less than a week's worth of workouts, and less than a week for me to tell him that I loved him like a brother. Did you ever get a chance to tell him? I never did that. And and I need to live with that now, you know, for the rest of my life. I don't want you to live with that kind of regret. So <clears throat> I encourage you to visit with somebody today that you haven't seen in a while or call them. You know, send a text, just one person. I don't care who, because you never know who won't be around tomorrow, including you. Doug absolutely loved the strength training community. And I just wanted him to know the strength training community loved him too. And we will never, ever forget him. Yeah, that's touching. I, I tell a lot of people that I know for a lot of years when I talk to them that I love them now. And I know it makes some of them feel weird because I have a couple friends that, you know, average Brooklyn guys, it's not something that rolls off the tongue. Yeah. But I say it a lot now. I say I love you to people that I really love often. I figure, you know what, who cares what they think like I'm being weird or what the deal is. I mean, I just feel like it's important at this age. Um, I think it's more important than ever. I would and I did the, I did the same thing when my for my when my father started showing signs. Yeah. You know, real signs of aging. Yep. I um whenever I hung up the phone, I always told him, Dad, you know I love you, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, No, no, I'm I am so fortunate to have you as a father. And I did that a lot at the end of his life because I, I never wanted him to regret anything that he did raising us. Um times were different than men were different than. But it's yeah. a, it's you got to say it, say it often, say it to people that you really do love. When and most of us feel like saying it, but then we don't because we don't want to make that person feel uncomfortable. We don't want want to make that person feel like they have to say it something in reciprocate. Say it anyway. You know I love you, right? That's it. Just say it. Get it out. Get it out in the open. I would have given anything to be able to to go back and do that. Um. But like you said, you know, two big, strong guys <laughs> in a gym full of big and strong guys. Yeah, those are words that don't roll off the tongue. They just right. don't. Right. They so, don't. And this is a perfect setup for my rant today. Shoot. Well, we have to take a break first. Okay. <laughs> but my rant is if I die, it's not because of anything I'm doing. It's because of what I'm not doing, thanks to my governor here in <laughs> Louisville. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Do you remember those delicious toaster pastries you had when you were a kid? You know, the rectangular sugar-filled snacks? Well, guess what? Legendary Foods has just made low-carb toaster pastry. This is the first of its kind, and honestly, these things are amazing. They have three to four net carb, less than one gram of sugar, and nine grams of protein. You can eat them right out of the wrapper or lightly toast them. The only question is, which flavor? Strawberry or brown sugar cinnamon? They're available at eatlegendary.com and Amazon. Ever wish there was a precise way to gauge your recovery from workout to workout? Or wonder if the money you're spending on your nootropic supplements are actually improving brain function? Maybe you're aging and you're noticing some changes in memory. Wouldn't being able to really test your brain be of great value? Well, now you can with great accuracy with the Brain Gauge. The Brain Gauge lets you test essential components of brain health and track your brain health history and all in the comfort of your own home. Go to gaugeyourbrain.com and use code SHR for $150 off this amazing device that's gaugeyourbrain.com and shr for 150 dollars off i love beef and if you love beef listen up i've discovered the best tasting beef in the world and that's not an exaggeration at piedmontese.com 
The Piedmontese breed is famous from Italy for being lean and unbelievably tender with half the fat and calories of traditional beef. Even typically tough cuts are tender when it comes from the Piedmontese cows. And for the first time ever, Piedmontese cows are being raised here in the USA. Get two free 10-ounce New York strips when you purchase $50 or more at Piedmontese.com with code SHR. Go to P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E dot com and use code SHR today. You will never eat any other type of beef ever again. How often do you sit with your laptop right on your lap? How much time do you spend on your cell phone? Are you in a technology-packed office Monday through Friday? Are you worried about this type of radiation? Now there's something you can do about it. GetLambs.com. This radiation has been linked to infertility in men, glandular tumors, gut microbiome dysbioses, and impaired sleep quality. Now you can provide 360-degree protection to at-risk parts of your body with radiation-proof apparel from GetLambs.com. Comfortable, breathable, and 99% effective. Go to GetLambs.com and use coupon code SHR for 20% off your order of $100 or more. That's getlambs.com, G E T L A M B S.com, and code SHR. Now, the number one best selling non hormonal anabolic agent at PredatorNutrition.com. Progenidrex has established itself as the category killer. If you're having difficulty gaining muscle while staying lean, you owe it to yourself to try Progenidrex. 100% of store reviews rated it at five stars, the highest possible ranking. And today, right now, there are guys pouring their hearts out on the gym with a little or nothing to show for it. Don't waste any more time. Go to PredatorNutrition.com today and get Progenidrex. The world's absolute best drug-free muscle gainer move over superheroes this is the superhuman channel so first of all i have to acknowledge that uh john meadows a wonderful human being uh, bigger than life in the bodybuilding community has contributed to a lot of people's success suffered a heart attack the other day and, oh wow! And, no, and is he okay? It sounds like he is. No one's updated anything, but it sounds like he is. Um, and I actually messaged him on Facebook, knowing that his wife Mary may see the message because I want to get to him to tell him about Thymosin Beta Four and Taylor Made Compounding still has it, and a doctor can prescribe it. And there's very good research that shows that the sooner you get Thymosin Beta Four after a cardiac ischemic, or even a, a brain ischemia, like a stroke. It actually resolves the uh, the process, heals it, and you don't end up with the necrotic tissue that you normally do. Wow. So if anybody's listening to this show who knows him, ask Mary to check her PMs, and I'm happy to intercede in getting them connected with TaylorMade and uh, getting him by prescription not suggesting he do anything illegal or, you know, uh, out of the ordinary by prescription thymus and beta four, because the sooner he gets that, the better off he'll be in the future. But that brings me to your discussion. So I've been quarantined now for 55 days. It's going on two months that I haven't trained. Granted, I do some stuff at home, but it's not the same. I can't load my body with heavy weight, get that stretch that keeps my muscles youthful. Um, I can't do the kind of things that really push me into true anaerobic respiration. And, and, and plus I don't have the gung ho mentality. I wake up and I, you know, kettlebells and farmer's walks and yeah. my air dime bike. It's like, you know, it's just, something is missing. Something is missing. In fact, I'm going to order a, a rogue uh, sled after the show today, because I would like to have that. That would be great. I had just started doing sprints with the sled yeah. before this happened. I was loving it. My lower back felt better. My hamstrings felt better. And I was, I was running with it, man. I, I was, I, I can't believe I can still sprint with half a foot. This is yeah. great news. And then boom, just like that. Sorry, you can't do that anymore. And we have a governor here in Kentucky who thinks that going to the gym, A, is dangerous, and B, 
is not important. He thinks liquor stores are important. You know, that's all important. Going out in the sun, that's not important. Um, he thinks that people should absolutely continue to get abortions because that's important. And that's not an abortion. That's not a, a pro-life, pro-choice statement. But those things are important. But getting your cancer therapy isn't important because a lot of people haven't been back in for their cancer therapy and who knows what's going to happen to them. But more importantly, if I drop dead in the next couple of weeks, it's not because of what I'm doing. It's because of what I'm not doing. I feel horrible. My muscles feel stiff. I've lost a lot of body mass. There's no doubt in my mind about it. My legs are getting skinny. But I just feel horrible. I feel old. This is how I would feel at 62 if I didn't do anything like I do. And that's going to kill me if I were to stay this way. Now, luckily, he's going to open up June 1st. We'll see what that means. But this is the first time in my life I've taken two months off from work. I mean, when I had surgeries, I continued to work out. When I tore my, had my left tricep reattached, I trained my right side and my legs. <laughs> I mean, when I had my left foot surgery twice in one year, I trained my right leg. I was able to train quads and hamstrings doing uh, extensions and, and curls. I mean, I've never not trained and I feel horrible and I can't imagine feeling like this for much longer. Uh, forget about the mental anguish of not training, the angst I feel for losing muscle that I hope I can regain. Uh, but my body is telling me like, we don't like this. The muscles are stiff. I wake up in the morning. I don't feel good. I haven't felt good in, in weeks, in weeks. And I know what it's from. Elisa and I talk about it all the time. Elisa will say to me, God, I got to get back into the gym. The way people say, I got to go on vacation, the term in my household is, I got to get back to the gym. Yeah. This is not right. I don't feel good. And I know that when I walk into the gym feeling like crack, I walk out feeling like King friggin' Kong. That's my medicine. This governor here is holding me hostage and not allowing me to take my medicine. And if you live in a state where your governor thinks going to the gym is optional, remember that when it comes time to vote, because nothing is more important than physical culture for keeping us healthy. And isn't this always about health care and how much we have to spend on health care and everybody needs free health care? It's like we are a group that takes responsibility for our health. We go to the gym and he's governors all around the country are saying, well, no, going to the gym is optional. No, it's not optional. No less optional than having an abortion. You know, what's incredible is now you and I know that proper training stimulates the immune system, keeps it in tip top function, right? But for whatever reason, the only thing that these decision makers associate with the gym are germs. Yeah, or ger germs and and germs and uh, and and vanity. Oh, all you care about is your muscles. It's like the idiots who keep saying, "Oh, the all you care about is 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 the economy and the stock market." When the stock market represents hundreds of millions of jobs. Yeah. Like when when a company crashes, millions of jobs are lost. So we're not talking about those big things we're talking about all the little people that are affected and the same is true about your health and the gym now you you said you have a date though right for your gym reopening yeah june 1st but but you know what it's going to be social distancing it's going to probably have luckily i train first thing in the morning when the gym is empty yeah or emptier let's like i would i would never train after three or four in, a, in the afternoon because that's when all the young people are there they're all showing off and they're wearing their booty shorts and like i don't go that that's not when I go. So those people are probably going to be really messed up. But I go early in the morning, and I'm hoping that I won't have a problem showing up and working out on day one because I, so, I'm like a junkie right now. I need a fix so friggin' bad, but it's not like for my brain. It's not because I want to look, because I still look more muscular than the average 62-year-old. That's not what it's about. That exercise, that workout saves my life. It's life-saving. Yeah. And people, I guess people don't realize how mental health is, is just as affected as one's physical health. And I don't know if 
I, we have no end game up here. There is no June 1st. They have said nothing about reopening gyms. And I have a bad feeling gyms will be one of the last places that they reopen. And you know, the crazy thing is this, before the state stepped in and closed all of them, our gym was functioning just fine with some modifications. One of those was 25 people out on in one, you know, room where most of the free weights were. And they have a back conditioning room where all the prowlers and everything else are 25 people in that. And you know what? Everything was just fine. Nobody was dropping like flies. There was no talk about anybody got, you know, getting infected. And unfortunately, the state came in, looked at, and like I said earlier, the only thing they can see when they look at gyms, they think are vain people and, and a germ, big germ pool, right? Right, right, right? And so what they don't see is human beings need to move. They need to feel uh, that they are doing something constructive. We need strenuous exercise. Yeah. Uh, look, gyms have been a replacement for labor. We used to labor from the days, from, from our first beginnings, we labored all day long to find food, to raise children, to stay away from getting killed by bears. We worked hard. Move forward to the 16, 17, 1800s, the agriculture. We worked hard. Farmers still work hard. We have always worked until now. Now it's all about being slothful and lazy. And the more slothful and the more lazy you are, the bigger and fatter you get. And you are the people that are actually susceptible from dying from this pandemic. Not me, not you, and not healthy people. This pandemic kills weak, sick people. And quite frankly, I said this yesterday, and I'm sure I'm going to get heat for saying this again, but if we would just let this virus cut through the population, you know what it'll get rid of? It'll get rid of all the people that are costing us billions of dollars on health care today. Now, I know that's a really horrible thing to say, but I'm just, I'm just, I don't want people to die. But I'm just being real. I'm just being accurate. That's who will die from this virus, the sick, slothful, unhealthy people. You'd also have more people with antibodies, right, that are prepared to knock this thing out and maybe what comes after it. And by, you know, sequestering us. Uh, you're just prolonging but, it. I, I just, yeah. did, I just did. A, so every day at the end of my show, I've been doing rants about COVID. So if we would, if let, let's just say like the government had so much money, they said, everybody stay home. Uh, we're going to put pools in your backyard so you can have fun, but we need everybody to stay quarantined for a year. When we started to come out again in a year, this virus will pick up where it left off in order for this virus to stop. You can't kill it by it doesn't die. If you've been infected with it, you still carry the virus. You just have the antibody and it doesn't do anything. As soon as you come in contact with other people, you start to transmit it again. That's how viruses because the truth is, if if that wasn't the case, we wouldn't have seasonal flu year after year after year. It would we would we would kill it one year with all the vaccines, or maybe let's say three years because the vaccine's only 55%. Uh, effective. So everybody would build up immunity over the course of three years. And then the seasonal flu would go away. It doesn't go away. It mutates. It stays in the population. Where do you think it's living out when it's outside seasonal flu? You think it's living in the tree outside your house? It's in your body. And then you either catch it or you give it to somebody else. <laughs> so the only way to get over this COVID-19 thing is to let it run its course. Once 60% of the population has had it, and most of them don't have symptoms. By the way, a great uh, article was published this morning that shows the higher your 25 hydroxy levels, vitamin D levels, the less likely you are to even have symptoms from it. Never mind die from it. So yeah, yeah. once we let it burn through the population, we develop herd immunity, then we have a chance of never having it come back around. And remember, vaccines are only 45 to 50 percent effective, and they're even less effective in obese people. Think about that. The people that we need to protect the most from this virus, it's only going to work on like maybe two out of five. That's it. Yeah. And if you remember, um, I dug up some research showing that uh, even a substandard night's sleep 
is <laughs> going to really subvert the effectiveness of any vaccine they come up with. So Look, this is, yeah, good, I'm sorry. It, it's just, here's the bottom line. Your immune system, as it exists today, is the first and probably is going to be the last line of defense. And it's going to determine whether you get the sniffles or you die. So let me read this. These are a couple good comments from listeners, okay? So Stelio is saying New York State is headed for a pension crisis. We already have one here in Kentucky, by the way. That's why Matt Bevan got voted out because all the school teachers wanted this jerk in whose father created the pension crisis. Steve Bashir created the pension crisis. They just voted his son in office to fix it. The, I mean, people don't even do what's in their best interest in this country, which I don't even understand. So he says, New York is headed for a pension crisis, much like Italy. We were $6 billion in deficit before the pandemic. Now we're $13 billion. How convenient to suppress fitness, son, keep people locked in with other potentially sick household members to impose fear and hysteria, and keeping glued to the mainstream media narrative, 66% of people contracting COVID-19 in New York State so far are in household from other members. They're not out. Cuomo just talked about this. Cuomo killed 5,000 elderly people. He has the blood of 5,000 elderly because he put, so family members were not allowed to visit their relatives in nursing homes for fear of giving the elderly COVID. But what did he do? He forced nursing homes to take, to accept patients with COVID-19. Completely exposing the elderly uh, population in those nursing homes to COVID-19, and they all died. 5,500 5, of the deaths in uh, in New York are from inside nursing homes because of this moron who's running this state. And you who voted for him, you're, you're, yeah, bigger, you're bigger morons. Those of you who voted for this guy are, are bigger morons. You put this idiot, yeah. this brainless moron, and I'm Italian. He's Italian. You know, I got nothing against the guy from a personal standpoint, but as a performer in the in government, he's a moron. And if you vote for him again, you deserve what you get. So, so let me let me make sure I understand. Instead of letting people into nursing homes that may be affected with COVID, he let people in that they knew for certain. They were sick. They were sick, and then he put them there with the elderly people. So you and I couldn't visit our mother in a nursing home because. Oh, you may give her COVID, but let's go ahead and take sick patients who have COVID and force nursing homes to let them convalesce there. Oh God! Oh man! He killed fifty. That. He killed fifty-five hundred elderly people unnecessarily, and and he should go to jail for this. I'm not kidding around. He should go to jail for what he did. And the moron is just trying to accumulate more debt so that the government will come and bail him out of the debt he created before this whole thing came around. But I don't think they're going to do that for him. I really don't. I don't think he's going to get what he wants. Rigo Vargas, who came on the show and talked about his experience with the Be Strong bands. By the way, if you uh, go to bestrong.training and order the upper arm bands only and use the code SHR instead of 288, they're 199, getting back to the discussion about building bigger biceps. Our gyms here in MS, that's Mississippi, right? Yeah, opened yesterday. I haven't been this psyched about working out in a long time. Stay strong, brother. June 1st is right around the corner. We'll come faster than you think. Yes, I know. I can't wait. But Rigo, man, I feel, I expect it to be like, I just bought a motorcycle. I expected my 62nd birthday to be uneventful, meaning that I'm strong, I'm healthy. And now I'm sincerely telling you that I feel like if I died next week, it's because I stopped training for two months. I really believe that. I'm not just saying that. It, there are consequences, right? I mean, that's that's just how it is. And uh, I certainly hope that doesn't happen. But there are some decisions being made that, like you said, are costing people's lives. And frankly, when this whole thing's over, I think we should send a nice bill to China. This is not, yes, I agree. China must pay for this to every country that they destroyed. But this is not Democrat or Republican. This is critical thinking and intelligence. If your governor is devoid of evidence of intelligence, then you need to make sure that you don't vote for them ever again. The guy in Illinois, for instance. Now, just think about this one thing. If you own a boat, and you want to take it out 
on what is it? One of the one of the Great Lakes that that is in Illinois. You're only allowed to have two people on the boat: the driver and a passenger. Now think about this. He was asked. I don't even know his name because I'm not a political person. He was asked this question during a press conference. What if a family of four want to take their boat out? He says, no, only two can go. So they'll have so now think about this for a second. They live in the same house. They crap in the same bathroom. They eat from the same utensils and from the same table, but they can't get on a boat and go out on the lake. This is evidence of ignorance. This is evidence of lack of intelligence. We can't keep voting people into office because we like them or because, oh, that's somebody I'd like to have a beer with. We need to start voting for people who have friggin' intelligent views about life. Yeah, it's really, it's a good example of, you know, some people, they say they're apolitical. Well, whether you're Democrat or Republican, there are people in positions making decisions that can affect your life in incredible ways more so than you could possibly know. And and this pandemic is just a, you know, it's, it's a good example of one. Brings it to, the, look, you know what I'm for? I'm for <laughs> IQ tests for politicians. And they have right. to post their IQ when they run for office. I'm for IQ tests for politicians. That's what I'm for. Le- what shouldn't, like if you owned a company, would you hire a stupid person to run it? You've got your life invested in it. This is no different than when we vote for a governor, a mayor, or anything. If you vote for stupid people, they're going to destroy you, destroy your economy, destroy your city, destroy your state. Now, you have a choice. You don't have to vote for stupid people, but we need to start to be able to identify stupid people. We do. I say from now on, let maybe we'll start a movement. Every politician must take and post their IQ before they will get voted for. That would be a great thing because we will see all the stupid people right up front then. That's it. Now, I know somebody in the audience will say, well, IQ tests are OK, fine. You tell me what tests. But we need to know that we're voting for people that have some modicum of intelligence since they are running a business. And that business is called our city, our state, our country. That's the yeah. business. We are the board of di- we are the stockholders. They are the board of directors and the and the uh, executives. So we need to make sure we're hiring people that are fit for the job, not just, oh, they're handsome or his father was our mayor or our governor, or, or I'd have a beer with that guy. He seems so nice. You know what? There's a lot of homeless people I'd have beers with, but I wouldn't let them run my country. Yeah. That's a good point. (laughs) That's it. So I I'm working hard not to die because I really feel horrible and I blame it on this frigging governor. And I'll tell you something else real quick before we go. Our gym was open in the beginning of this, and then they abruptly closed it down. I'll bet you nobody in the gym got COVID-19, and we were all there. during. We were all talking about it. I wasn't even wiping the machines down. People were wiping the machines down. I was like, no, nah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was my point earlier. You know, the same thing was going on in my gym before they closed it. Nobody was dropping like flies. In fact, I didn't hear of a single person that had it from the gym. Yeah. This is so, – we, we are being – in the words of – of uh, of Malcolm X, we are being hoodwinked by our politicians right now. We are. This is not about keeping you healthy. It's not about saving lives. If it was about saving lives, we would we they would have started talking about getting tobacco off the market a decade ago. That takes 1.5 million people a year. Do the math. That's like a million one every month die from tobacco use every month. But that's okay because the government makes tax money on that. And so the, the, the truth of the matter is you can kill people in the United States as long as the government gets their money. That's the yeah. God's honest truth. Argue, fight me on that. I want somebody to tell me that I'm wrong about that. I, I'm just going to use tobacco as the example to win that argument. The government doesn't care about our health. They don't care about They care about votes. They care about staying in power. They care about their pensions. They care about the golden parachute that they live under for the rest of their lives. That's what they care about. Their families being protected. They don't care about you and me. If they cared about you and me, they'd be fighting to get tobacco off the market. Right. So, all right, that's it for today. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I don't even know what show. We have some really good shows this week. Thanks to Elisa. Hey, Rob, thanks for letting me rant and staying, staying with me on that. Thank you. All right, man. Good luck. Make it. You're going to make it to June 1st, all right? Well, after, after that rant, I feel better. <laughs> Maybe that's what <laughs> right. I, just, I just need to do that every day, and that'll keep my heart ticking. There you go. <laughs> I will right, we'll see everybody tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing the show. Thanks for participating. Take care. Stay strong.